Oh yeah, you can see I've been busy with a few more jugs uh, and a couple of shoes. But today, this is a, a quick one for the farriers out there. I know one or two watch my channel. wondered if any of you have used these Olive rubber shoes. You can see they're a bit filthy. I've had them for years. I've been kicking around in the back of the workshop. They're quite thick rubber over a steel insert. Um, I have used quite a few over the years, but I just don't have much of a use for them these days. Um, I find them very, very slippery for grass use. So if you're constantly on the road, they're brilliant. They're lovely on the road. But if you suddenly decide you're going to go across a field, you'll be slipping all over the place. You can, however, put studs in. But to me, that sort of defeats the object. Because you, if you're going to go off-road onto grass, you've got to stop, put your studs in, then take them out again when you come off the grass. Not a good idea. So you, you, you know, if you're going to stay on one or the other, then they're fine. Um, you can put studs in them. There's uh, the facility for it. Um, you can put them at the heels and the toe. And I think you can even put them sort of halfway along. But anyway, let's talk about how we fit them. First thing we've got to do is get the rubber off that clip. That's very thick and there's no way you're going to put that in the wall. So the way I do it, just because I can, cordless angle grinder which I carry with me all the time anyway in the truck. Um, just grind the rubber off. Now this is best to do outside because that rubber stinks. It really does. Um, you can do it with a um, knife and a rasp. But obviously it takes a bit longer. It's just as easy and quick to whip it off with a, the grinder. You could stick it in a vise and do it, but as I say, it's best done outside. You want to get in the back of the clip as well. Get the, the rubber off the back so you're, you're back to sort of bare metal because you want to get the clip as tight up to the foot as possible. And then, oh, it's blessed in hand. Then take the front off. Just get it off back to bare metal again. And then you can sort of shape the clip up because it's it's normally square, but I tend to round it off a bit. Then just round off the, or take off the bits of rubber that have come out. And that's it. Nice rubber free clip. And you can see it's um, dead upright, so you want to knock that back so it lies against the wall. So, now we've got the cl clip unrubbered, how do we shape them up? Well, there's a couple of ways, and this will be the first. Ordinary anvil, if you've either got one in your van or you're doing it at your, at your shop, you can just use them on your anvil. Close them up, dead simple like a normal shoe. Pull on one quarter, turn it round, pull on the other quarter. And if you want to open them up, just over the edge of the anvil, give it a clout. It's simple as that. And then you just level them in the normal way with your hammer. However, if you've got uh, horns on the end of your anvil, like some, some guys have, you can stick them in the horns and hammer them around to pull your heels on. Um, that's sort of one of the basic ways of doing it, just as in a sort of a traditional way you, that you'd move ordinary steel shoes about. But I do have another method. So we'll go outside, I've got the kit out there, and we'll show you on this one. Alright, some of these bits I bought, some of them I made. Um, Let's start with the bit I bought. You can see they haven't been used for a very long time. They're covered in rust. This bit here, the main bit of kit, you can see it's got the Olive name on it and 131. I don't know if that's a serial number or what, or model. But anyway, that bit I bought, it's double-sided. Just a bit of plate with two bits of, well, all sorts on them. Got these adjustable things all set off-centre off so you can move them around, make them wider. Um, handle to go on, just a lever, 
give you your leverage to bend. Then this bit I made, it's like an adapter, because I think originally this bit here was meant to go in a small anvil. And then the stool jack, I made this. It's like a bigger, beefier version of the one I use every day for my cold chewing. Um, I made this up shortly after I bought all the, the other kit because I found it easier. I didn't have a small anvil. Um, and I found it easier taking it out with me other stool jack to use this. So let's see how it all goes together and we'll see if I can remember after all these years how to operate it all. Alright, let's see if we can put it together. Adapter in first and that goes in the top of there. I think I'll have to move the camera up so you can see properly. Up we go. But that, and now you can see uh, already a deliberate mistake. I've put it in the wrong bit. That's the bit that goes in there. That's it. So the two arms are free. And simply put on the handle on whichever side you want to use. Now this one I think is for the opening up. You can you stick the shoe. Oh, you have to move this. This is what these adjustable lugs are for because of the different widths of shoe. So you get a tight fit and you can put it wherever you like, that holds it and you just lean on it somehow and that will pull it out. Obviously you can't use it for pulling on. If you put it on it just won't, it, there's nothing to grip on. So that doesn't work doing that and now it's got stuck. I'll tell you what it is, it's, I think it's this, that adjustable lug's locked on it. Can't move it around. That's it. There you go. That that thing locked on it. So that was for opening out. And you can turn it around the other side for pulling on. Now then, how does this one go? Um, no, not like that. No. Uh, do you know it's so many years since I've used this blooming thing? I can't figure it out. I think that might. Is that it? No, don't think that's it either. Uh, where the hell does this go? That's it, like that. There you go. Right, you want to pull it on, you put it through, and again you can adjust the block. And then you pull it through and it pulls it on. You adjust that block to get, again, for thicker or th thicker or thinner shoes, and depending on where you put it. And that will pull it on, round it off a bit more. So that's basically it. You can, again, if you're out on site, you can just use this, pull it on through those holes if it will go. Um, either, either heel, knock it on, knock the clip on. Let's get a hammer and just demonstrate. Let's see. So if I was out on site and I was playing about with it, I could use this, knock the clip on. Knock your heel on, or your quarter, close it up, open it up, simple as. That's basically it. So, let's go and talk about studs. Because as I say, um, they are very slippery on grass. And the company have got a comparison on their website saying that they're they're pretty good on slick surfaces. Well, in my experience, experience, they're not. So you can put these studs in. The trouble is, you've got to get through the rubber to get to the steel. Now, I only ever put them at the heels. You can put them at the toes. Um, and you can also, I think, put them at the quarters. As you can see, these circles, I always assumed that that's where was your best point for putting studs. So I always used these heel too. As a guide for putting my studs in. But the thing is, the you've got to get through the thick rubber to put the stud in. Because the, 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 the steel insert is right at the top here on the foot surface. 
it's only about an eighth of an inch or maybe three sixteenths of an inch thick. So you've got to get through the rubber underneath. Uh, and you've got to have a big enough hole so that you can put the stud in and seat it onto the steel. So you need a drill, something like this. I don't know what this is actually called. I don't know if it's a counter bore drill or what. But you want one with your, your tapping size and then your actual stud size. So you drill through your rubber, through the steel, and then counter bore it so there's enough room on the top to get your stud in to go down to the steel, if you can understand that. So it's a bit more complicated. I used to go from the back here, through there, with your, your uh, tapping size, and turn it over, and use your tapping hole as a guide to counter bore it. So it's a bit more long-winded, but it does work. Um, but as I say, if you're going to be using studs to get your grip, you might just as well have used um, steel shoes. But then I think these are you know used a lot in icy countries where they're going to use four or six studs all the time. Um, so there you go. I'll show you the uh, page from their website. Now this is the comparisons. If you look at what they compare between the Olive and the traditional shoe. They reckon grip on hard ground good. Um, traction on slick surface is very good and less good for a traditional shoe. Well I found that pretty completely opposite basically. But it does say it's compared by somebody else or done by somebody else. But if you look at their studs page it's all ice or grass studs. So it sort of confirms my theory. Um, but anyway, there you go. So, let's have a look at the nail fit. This is another slight issue. I don't know what sort of size this is. This one's about a five and a half or six inch shoe, I think. Let's have a quick measure up. Yeah, five and a half. So, it's a reasonable size shoe. It's the sort of shoe I'd use quite a lot, that sort of size. So I'd probably use a size 5 nail, maybe a 6 if it was a cobby sort. So this is a 6, an E-head 6 nail. Let's see what it looks like in the hole. Get it in, give it a tap through the rubber. Now that sits nice and flush, that fits in that hole lovely. It's nice and flush, it's tight, fits well. but. There's absolutely no pitch on it. See, that is dead upright. Which, obviously, isn't going to be a problem at the heels. But let's have a little look at it at the toe. Where you need a reasonable amount of pitch. Let's try and knock this one in. Again, dead upright. Absolutely no pitch whatsoever. So you might struggle on some poor footed horses in getting a, some decent height on the nails but you know that's just one problem which can be got over they all have their uses these things they're all another tool in the toolbox for different applications oh yeah and I just remembered when I was turning this off, that I made a tap out of an old one, which I use every day for cleaning out stud holes. It's not a particularly sharp tap, I just use it for cleaning holes out. And a hoof pick. And I can tell you it's pretty good steel, but it also demonstrates how thick the steel is and where it is. So it's very close to the, the foot surface, and probably just less than 3 16 thick. You've got a nice thick bit of meat on the wearing surface. You do get a fair bit of wear out of these that you'd probably get your normal six weeks wear out of them. So, there you go. Just another tool in the toolbox. They have their uses, but unfortunately with us not being a, an icy, snowy country, um, and they're limited for their use on grass, I don't use them a lot. But some of you guys out there might find them very, very useful. So there you go. 
my quick take on the Olive original rubber shoe. Thanks for watching.